She always speaks the truth and she's never afraid to tackle political correctness and lefty lunacy even within her own party. Head on. Liberal Senator Connie Fiavanti Wells, welcome back to Outsiders. So good to see you. How are you? How are you, Rowan? Good morning, uh, Rita and James. Look, so good to have you back on the show, even though you're not in the same studio with us. We're all in our separate studios. But, um, Connie, you've been warning about China. Does this come as a surprise to you, the sudden interest in uh, what a threat China can be? Look, I think uh, let's go back and have a look at... Uh, issues that I raised a couple of years ago, the whole concept of debt trap diplomacy and in particular what was happening in the Pacific and at that time uh, we were looking at very low uh, levels of debt in comparison to what we've seen around the world. Uh, after my comments it sparked an international debate on the whole concept of debt trap diplomacy and in particular the Communist Party's activities around the world and we saw in particular uh, issues relating to debt trap diplomacy in places like Sri Lanka, in places like Africa and of course as we know what is debt trap diplomacy? It's massive spending on infrastructure government can't pay, loans are given and as a consequence of that failure to repay that loan then of course the asset, uh, that debt is turned into equity and the country that's lending uh, then takes that asset and we have seen that systematically happen in different parts of the world and so now uh, especially as we see countries that are economically stressed the question then is raised, what happens now? Are we going to see higher levels of debt trap diplomacy uh, being uh, seen uh, around the world, particularly as we come out of this pandemic? Rita. Um, I want to ask you about two things. One, our dependence on China for essential goods, including essential medical goods and medicines. Uh, we are so dependent on them for pharmaceuticals in particular and also about how they use uh, projects like Belt and Roadway to, to gain an influence and Victoria, as we know, has uh, signed up for that initiative. Well, I think this whole uh, pandemic issue has uh, demonstrated to us the precarious nature of our supply chains. And I think as we come out of this issue, one very important consideration for Australia is decoupling our trade uh, from this communist regime. I mean, to have over 25%, 26.4% of our trade uh, in uh, trade eggs in one basket with this communist regime demonstrates to us that it's time for us to reconsider those supply chains and in particular those supply chains that are so vital uh, to uh, medical, pharmaceutical and all of those issues. And therefore, I think that time has come when we need to look at this dependency that we seem to have on China, especially for goods which I think uh, could be made in Australia. And that's hopefully one positive that will come out of this. James? Globalisation and uh, free trade, Connie, have... Uh wound up letting a lot of our jobs, a lot of our manufacturing, all bleed offshore, largely to China. Do you think it's time to, for Australia to consider some sort of industrial policy uh, that would encourage more uh, active manufacturing, more active jobs growth in those fields, which we had just sort of let go by the wayside when we decided, oh, we can just be you know, a service economy and buy everything else from the cheapest provider? Do we need to start looking harder at reacquainting the market with the nation state? James, you're absolutely correct. We have to look at uh, what are we actually buying from overseas? And when you look at the sort of things that we're buying, the electronics, toys, mattresses, furniture, a whole range of different things that we are buying from China and from other parts of the world, I think it's time for us to seriously look at how much more we can uh, develop in Australia, how much more we can make in Australia so we don't become so vulnerable as we have been at the moment. I mean, we saw recently with the issue of hand sanitizer. It's all very well for us to have uh, sought to make it here in Australia, but the plastic bottles 
<laughs> in which to put the sanitizer actually came from China. So therefore, we have to look at that whole supply chain. But it's much more broader than just trade, James. I think the time has also come for us to look at uh, critical infrastructure, uh, look at our whole concept of foreign investment in Australia, going back to the point that Rita made before, particularly where you've got critically and economically stressed uh, circumstances and states. What we don't want to see is in those circumstances uh, vulnerability of corporate entities being then taken over uh, by foreign entities at a time when we need them to remain in Australian hands. So that whole concept of critical infrastructure, which at the moment is confined to ports and utilities, I think we need to seriously look at expanding that to look at other industries which are critical infrastructure for Australia and tightening the rules in relation to investments there to ensure that we do not put ourselves in a circumstance where we are economically stressed and we do have predatory economic uh, behaviour uh, coming in and taking over those uh, enterprises. Um, Connie, uh, I'll ask you in a second about FERB, the Foreign Investment Review Board, which you're referring to there. But first, just the very, very good news. I'd like to reassure you that in the two and a half years since you lost your job, the sea level rises in uh, the South Pacific are still, still, would you believe it, only very, 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 very minuscule. You'll be relieved to know that. Uh, now, Connie, Foreign Investment Review Board. Um, what do you think they... I mean, Josh uh, Frydenberg has called changes. Uh, what do you think needs to be done there? Look, that's a very welcome change and it's a good start. But I think uh, for the future, we need to look at and examine further restrictions. Uh, when you step back at the end of this and you start looking at what Australians expect us and expect our government to do, I think that there needs to be a change in our relationship with the communist regime in China. That is for sure, and that is something that Australians are expecting. Now, whether it's in the foreign investment review area where we tighten up some of those restrictions, whether it is in terms of us revisiting decisions such as the port of Darwin, there, there are a raft of things that I think we need to seriously look at, both internationally and domestically. Domestically, of course, they are the things that are most within our purview to affect and those are the expectations that I believe Australians uh, want uh, us to undertake. Now internationally we recently saw uh, that paper that was uh, produced by the Henry Jackson Society, the think tank in the United Kingdom that looked at coronavirus uh, compensation. So there are a raft of international issues that will need to be examined and most especially culpability issues and breaches of international law as a consequence of breaches of the international health regulations. So there's action that may be taken internationally and of course we know that internationally there is a degree of reluctance uh, to take action uh, against countries uh, like China. But domestically, I think that we, it's incumbent upon us to look at this relationship, look at our dependency on China. And I think, sadly, we have a long way to go. I mean, let's not Absolutely. forget that, yep. that only a year ago we had three Chinese warships sailing That's into right. Sydney Harbour. Right. At, exactly. the same, yeah, at the same time, Rowan, as our ships were being harassed uh, in uh, passage uh, towards Vietnam and of course daily we see uh, reports of where our allies are undertaking freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea and uh, communist regimes uh, bellicose and illegal actions in the South China Sea uh, to which they have no no right and of course we're seeing this daily so I think we've got a long way to go it will take a lot of political fortitude and let's just hope that our political leaders have that political fortitude let's to respond so. to the to to what the Australian public expect them to do Connie Fiavanti Wells, always great to have you on Outsiders. Uh, I'm sure you'll be rushing out to buy that Turnbull book to see what's in it. Uh, hardly. 
Um, great to see you. Have a very happy Easter and thanks for coming on Outsiders. Happy, happy Easter to you too and I hope that the Easter Bunny has visited, <laughs> Rowan. Thanks a lot.